Shalom for friends and welcome to the continuation of our Lessons of Hope series. It is so good to have you back. Uh, we are uh, now going to discuss uh, Lesson 11 uh, of our series of Lessons of Hope. Um, I would like to welcome uh, uh, God's servant, Pastor Gilly, and uh, as well as uh, Elder Chris. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, we're looking forward to uh, another fruitful discussion. Uh, we hope that you'll be blessed. So uh, let's start with a word of prayer. Uh, Pastor Kitty, would you like to pray? Sure. Father, we just continue to thank you for your goodness and mercy for us. Amen. We thank you, Father, for this wonderful opportunity to discuss your word and open and see what your will is for our lives and how to interpret the Bible and mm. that we may understand you and know you, for this is eternal life. Amen. We pray for your spirit to lead us and guide us in all truth, to bring to mind the things that we ought to discuss that are relevant for the lesson, that we might uh, be able to learn lessons of how to properly do, uh, interpret the Bible when we read it, so that we can come to an edifying and beautiful and wonderful and correct conclusion. Amen. So bless our study now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Our title for this uh, lesson is The Bible and Prophecy. Last week we were talking about uh, the book of Genesis. We concluded last week the two uh, parts of the uh, discussion of the book of Genesis so that we can understand the foundation uh, of the Bible. Uh, mainly, most of the doctrines in the Bible derive from the book of Genesis because that's foundational. So this week we're going to look at uh, Prophecy. It's one of it covers thirty uh, percent mm. of of the whole Bible. So it's very important that we understand how to interpret prophecy. Not only the Bible itself, but inside the Bible, the prophecies uh, is one of the. I think it's one of the narratives that will help under, under help us understand the reality about God. Huh? Yes. So today we're going to look at that uniqueness of <clears throat> uh, prophecies but it's important that we understand how to interpret them. Let's start with uh, reading the, the main text in the book, book of Daniel, chapter 8, uh, verse 14. And Pastor Kitty, would you like to uh, start with that? Sure. Please. And he said unto me, Unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. So this is uh, <clears throat> a... Bible text referring to that 2300 day mm. uh, prophecy here. But um, prophecy is very important mm. to interpret correctly. Mm. Uh, as we've been studying the overall theme for mm -hmm. the quarter, which is to interpret the Bible, um, interpreting the Bible correctly means to interpret who God is correctly mm -hmm. because he's trying to convey to us who he is right. through scripture. Mm -hmm. We learned from last week's <coughs> lesson that uh, the scientists were able to observe God's uh, handiwork, mm. His creation. We know that nature is the second book, uh, lesson book, right. I should say, right. of who God is. Mm -hmm. So there's a connection between the first lesson book, mm -hmm. which is His Word, and nature, which is the second lesson book mm -hmm. of who God is. And so there's a connection with interpreting God's Word and interpreting His handiwork mm -hmm. uh, so that when we... Uh, both see that the interpretation of both uh, agree with one another. We're interpreting who God is correctly. Mm -hmm. Today, we're talking about prophecy, right. which is another element uh, that we must interpret correctly in order to interpret God correctly. Why do I say that? Because God uh, actually identifies prophecy mm -hmm. as, who, as part of who He is. Mm -hmm. So in Isaiah 46... In verse 9 and 10, the Bible says, Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is no other. Mm. I am God, there is none like me. Now, verse 10 is how he declares how there's no one like him. Mm -hmm. Verse 10 says, Declaring the end mm -hmm. from the beginning. And from ancient times, things that are not yet mm -hmm. done. So this is a line referring to prophecy, events that happen not only in the future, but he can also declare to us what happened in the mm, past. Yes. So God said, I am God mm. for this reason. Mm -hmm. There is no other God that yes. can tell you the future. Mm -hmm. No other God that can tell you what happened in the past. Best. 
So because there's none like me, mm -hmm. I'm the only one like that. That's why prophecy is very key yes. to understanding who God is, because God identifies right. that with himself. But Bible prophecy is crucial to our identity mm -hmm. and mission as uh, Adventists, mm -hmm. because prophecy provides an internal and external uh, accuracy of mm. God's word. Uh, so it's key for us to look into some of the prophecies that we go into here, make sure that we uh, interpret it correctly. And as Adventists, we are known to interpret prophecy through the historicist method. Yes. Now, there are other, uh, there are three prevalent methods mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that are used to interpret prophecy. Mm. There's the preterist mm. method. There's the historicist method, and then there's the futurist, futurist. Uh, method. So uh, just for our viewers, basically the preterist method is basically taking the prophecies and saying they've already been fulfilled, fulfilled. in the past. Mm. The futurists, they take the Bible prophecies and throw all of them into the future, mm -hmm. that they are yet to happen. The Adventists, the Seventh-day Adventists, we interpret prophecy through the historicist method, which is basically... We believe that prophecies have been fulfilled. Mm. They are being fulfilled right now. And there are prophecies to be fulfilled. Mm. And I believe this is the method also used by Daniel and John in their interpretation of prophecy given uh, to them. So understand, understanding this, uh, we're told in uh, Testimonies for the Church, Volume 8, page 307, we are to see in history the fulfillment of prophecy. Mm. To study the workings of providence in the great reformatory movements and to understand the progress of events in the marshalling of the nations for the final conflict of the great controversy. So uh, this is uh, how a Sabbath uh, mm -hmm. lesson begins mm -hmm. off our, uh, our lesson study for this week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, that's very nice. He's uh, established the foundation now for us to uh, discuss the the interpretation of prophecies. Uh, right, right. So, so we're going to talk on the understanding that we are using the historicism yes. uh, perspective. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and this is what we uh, want to point out at this point mm. is what we inherited. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. We must not forget mm -hmm. yes. that this is not unique to the Seventh-day mm -hmm. Adventist mm -hmm. Church. Yeah. But it is unique to the, the Christian Church mm -hmm. as a whole. Mm -hmm. And we happen to be the last, if we can use that mm -hmm. phrase, mm -hmm. last standing Christian part of the church mm -hmm. right. as Seventh-day Adventist Christians that continues to adhere to the, uh, to, the to, the, to the correct interpretation of Scripture as a result of the of the sacrifice and you know and the, mm. and the, and, the, and the dedication and devotion of those that were divinely led mm -hmm. by the spirit of god during the times of the reformation mm. yeah. so we, we we have a we have inherited that and and yeah. we continue to stay with it and we want to point out that this is this is uh, 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 this is the same uh, uh, this is the same way of, of reading, studying, interpreting prophecies in scriptures from that time mm -hmm. that we still continue to adhere to, mm -hmm. and it's called the uh, historicism mm -hmm. uh, method, mm -hmm. which simply put is, is the, uh, it, it, it's the, um, the, the description of the belief mm -hmm. that uh, Bible prophecy is an unbroken line uh, uh, of the flow of history mm -hmm. from, from 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 the past to the present right. yep. to the future. So that's where we're at, and and as we look at it, we we, we learn from the uh, from from the interpretation of, of of prophecy itself by the by the writers of prophecy like Daniel and John. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That uh, the, the the Bible explains itself. Like we we know that uh, Daniel two is is the. Uh, mm -hmm. Is, is the prophecy of the uh, of, of the uh, nations of the world all the way up to the end. So we know that Bible identifies Babylon mm. as the beginning of right. of the historical setting mm -hmm. of 
this particular prophecy. Mm -hmm. So right. when it was written, it was written in the time of Daniel, yeah. but it was written in the time of the, uh, of the historical mm -hmm. nation of Babylon. And so history and, 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 and the scriptures go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. But as a prophecy, that's when God laid out the entire history to the end of time. Yes. Uh, so mm -hmm. we wouldn't know where we were at mm -hmm. if we weren't given the, uh, the, 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 the package of how to interpret and understand all these prophecies from the times of the early Christians. And so we have gotten it and we continue to, to apply it and, and it fits. Mm -hmm. we, we've, we've mentioned preterist and futurist and uh, we know from history that uh, those were attempts to, to uh, discredit yeah. the work of Reformation mm. yes. from the <clears throat> times of Wyc uh, Wycliffe and uh, Haas and Luther and, and mm. Swingley. And so th those were attempts to throw off the exposure of the, uh, uh, of the uh, papal power mm. because we know that that's when the papal power was identified. Mm. Mm. So we know that uh, the unbroken history of, of how mm. we identify ourselves as a church. So the, the forefathers would not have identif uh, identified who they were if, if it had not been for the, the study and the interpretation of prophecy mm. as, as it was written by, by the prophet right. Daniel. And so we, we, see the, uh, we see the historical setting from, 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 from the uh, uh, nation of Babylon, to Media Persia, to Greece, and even up to Rome. Mm -hmm. So we know even, and even in, in, in the scripture, as we read the, the book of Daniel, um, in chapter 8, you know, it, it, it names some of those yes. uh, nations. You know, mm -hmm. it names Media Persia, mm -hmm. it names Babylon, it names uh, Greece. And so convenient for us, you know, we don't really need to, you know, right. To try and 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 discredit the, uh, you know the, the 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 historical facts with the biblical prophecy, but it's amazing that that, that God gave these prophecy prior to the appearing of these of these nations, and so that's uh, a, a, a part of what we we do as 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 Bible prophecy yeah. students that adhere to the historical setting, and so we know that. Um, Part of that is the, we learn from that that in 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 the telling of prophecy in in the Bible setting, it uses the principle of uh, repeat mm -hmm. or recapitulation. Mm -hmm. You know where we find in Daniel two is the image, and it it shows the historical layout of the nations from mm -hmm. Babylon all the way up to Rome, all the way up to the <coughs> second coming of Christ, and then we find it again in Daniel chapter seven depicted as, as uh, beasts, you know, and then we find it again in, in, in the repeat in Daniel 8 with a lot more details and a lot more information, more specific as we get into Daniel 8, we see the characteristics of the, of the, of the kingdoms or the nations depicted in the, in the beasts, and we see features that tell more about who they are, but again, we, we, we study what the Bible says and we, we put it up against history and it matches perfectly. Yes, so yes, it's, it's, yes. It's, it's the way that the Bible is presenting history. And then um, all those, uh, uh, all those uh, interpretations and studies is based uh, primarily on the principle that we can interpret prophecy and we can uh, uh, identify the fulfillment of, of prophecy Definitely. in history. So very important Amen. for us to, 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 yes. to, to emphasize the, 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 the place of history mm. in the interpretation of, of prophecy, Bible prophecy. As a, as a Bible student, you know, I, I don't know if you've seen other, other people trying to describe or, or fit in the prophecies. Uh, from preterist and futurism um, point of view. Mm -hmm. uh, it's almost like looking at a person who's trying to fit a puzzle, but mm -hmm. is trying to look for pieces to, to fit in the missing parts of the puzzle. It, it cannot fit. So they're looking for, for pieces to, to fit in, it doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. 
But uh, amazingly, when I'm, you know, as I study prophecies using historicism, it, it's like everything fits in well. Mm. And, and it's so amazed how, how historicism uh, shows us that God meant what he says. And he fulfills every th little bit of his prophecies in time that he said it was going to happen. Uh, and, and you can see that from historicism, you know, vividly, without any doubt, because there's proof in history mm -hmm. of the exact events and the exact time that God says it's going to happen. Absolutely. Whereas in the preterism and futurism, there's so much there that have a lot of questions, a lot of questions. So. Uh, you know, for, for our viewers out there, any Bible student who who would like to to have a second look at, uh, you know, trying to interpret prophecies, I think you should try historicism because, uh, you know, from my own experience, mm -hmm. it, it, there's nothing uh, else. That yeah. The, the preterist view, especially when it comes to Daniel uh, chapter 7 and talking about the beast, mm -hmm things of that nature, <clears throat> they identified the beast as uh, Emperor Nero, mm -hmm. which, would, which would mean that the beast is already passed yes. and his mark is yes. already passed. Yes. This is the preterist view. Uh, the futurist <clears throat> looks at the mark of the beast as some futuristic uh, like microchip, microchip in your, <laughs> in your head. <laughs> so these are attempts to try to uh, humanly interpret scripture. Mm -hmm. When the Bible interprets yes. itself, and when the Bible interprets itself, it tells you, by the way it's laid out, to use the historicist mm -hmm. method, mm -hmm. not just pick and choose yes. and think yes. it's... Because, uh, yeah, when you look at when they say it's Nero, <laughs> the date is wrong. <laughs> Nero ruled during the time of the Iron Lakes. But the beast that the Bible talks about that would become an anti-Christ uh, yes. power is it comes out during the feet and the toes time. Mm -hmm. So the time doesn't fit. And you understand that mm -hmm. if you use the historicist method. Right. But if you throw away the historicist method, now it's open for whatever yeah. interpretation you want it to be. You that's, know? that's why we have a lot of these <clears throat> theories nowadays mm -hmm. that, that discredited the, the historicism yeah. uh, point of view. Mm -hmm. and, and it's so important that we stick with this. Mm -hmm. Anything else from that will be you know, chaos for us. And also not to mention the mark of the beast being a microchip, mm -hmm. but they believe that the Antichrist is a man, <laughs> a single man entity that comes out, you know, but forgetting that if you read Paul's writings, he right. says there the enters and the Antichrist is coming, mm -hmm. but there are even now many the spirit of the Antichrist yeah. exists. So it's they throw this thing way totally into the future yeah, yes. instead of using the historicist method mm -hmm. to understand. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so part of, uh, of the principles that we need to uh, consider when we interpret using historicism mm -hmm. is the day-year principle. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Chris, would you like to enlighten that principle for us? Yeah, those are very important because uh, the day-year principle is the principle based on the, uh, on the uh, 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 presentation of prophecy mm. as uh, time periods that has to deal with the history mm -hmm. of mankind. So first of all, the, we're dealing with uh, with uh, a prophecy that uses uh, symbolic language, mm. and uh, it's important to to know that in the in the biblical uh, 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 study and, in, and interpretation of, of scripture, we recognize um, and scripture itself would. M would indicate that it is symbolic uh, in itself, mm -hmm. you know. And so, if it is symbolic, we we understand that that everything that has that that's related to that topic or s subject of study is interpreted symbolically instead of literally, mm -hmm. you know. And then the other parts of scripture is clear. If it's not symbolic, it's not prophetic. It's it's just. Uh, simple facts mm -hmm. presentation then we, we we read it literally you know as, as it goes but mm -hmm. um, understanding the uh, principle of uh, of the day year principle we we we, we adopt the, uh, the the two scriptures for for the sake of those mm -hmm. that want to study right. it 
and learn and, and understand why why do we use the day year principle for interpretation of scripture is found in numbers 14 34 and ezekiel's 4 verse 6 mm -hmm. both both of them are, are are in the context of god dealing with with his people israel mm -hmm. and in the in, in in the presentation of the uh, of the principle he 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 says that you know according to the 40 days of their uh, visit, you know, uh, to, to the land of Canaan, and as a result, they rebelled against the, the command of God to enter the, the, the promised land and take it. God says, well, uh, I'll just take you back, you know, and, and have you uh, re-journey mm -hmm. through the wilderness for 40 years. And the principle was every, every day that you, that, that you, that you used to visit Canaan and come back with the with the false report was 40 days I'll give you one year for one day so that's where the principle comes from yes. but the question is why do we justify how can we justify using it mm. for interpretation of scripture but first of all it's because of the of, of the special language that, mm. that the symbolic language mm -hmm. that we use because it's symbolic therefore we we, we need to interpret it symbolically and then uh, so, uh, the second uh, reason why we we justify using that principle for interpretation of prophecy is because it has to do with long periods of times. So when you're talking about uh, evenings and days, two thousand three hundred uh, uh, evenings and days, it's it's quite it's quite a, a, a mm. you know a, a time period. You know, it's 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 dealing with history. We know it's dealing with with uh, kingdoms that were laid out all the way to the end of history. Mm -hmm. and, and so that was number two. And then number three is that um, it's not a normal mm -hmm. way of, uh, of counting uh, time. Is that we don't normally say 2,300 e evenings and days, but we spell it out in years mm -hmm. or months. Uh, so those are the uh, uh, the reasons why we use the principle, and when we use that day year principle, it it it, it is able to interpret uh, prophecy, and 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 then it will fit right inside the historical setting as it was intended to be. For all all of the prophecies of Scripture is based on the linear flow of history, from the past, present, and future. So there there are there are no broken. Mm. parts mm -hmm. of that interpretation yeah. it's, it's a single flow all the way from genesis all the way to the coming of christ mm. the whole yeah. the, the whole prophecy of scripture is set with inside that uh, historical setting of creation to the second coming of christ so yes. we see that prophecy fits well in those uh, um, history setting if we interpret it with the yes. daily principle Everything makes sense. Yes. If you use the day year principle. Yes. Okay. And, and if you mm. measure it against history, it yes. will not make sense if you don't yes. use that principle. Yes. Because 2,300 days is approximately about six years. Yes. Mm -hmm. So six years for, it won't nothing, make sense. Yeah. Nothing much happened during <laughs> right. that time in Israel. <laughs> no. Right. But, but even the 70 weeks, or the 490 years mm -hmm. uh, principle, mm -hmm. it falls, in, you know, uh, perfectly yes. with what happened to Israel and the mm -hmm. coming of the Messiah mm -hmm. and even those uh, you know 30, 30 plus years of Jesus and his ministry and then the stoning of Stephen and then from then on up to you know 1798 until yeah. 1844 mm -hmm. all those all those years were they perfectly fit in mm -hmm. uh, they because, do because we we follow that principle yes okay now let's look into um, um, perhaps this is the perfect example of of using the historicist method. Huh? Mm -hmm. Is identifying the little horn of mm -hmm. Daniel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's let's discuss that one. Yeah. Um, so for centuries, the Protestant reformers, mm. you know, pretty much identified the little horn of uh, Daniel seven and eight as the Roman uh, Catholic Church, mm. the papacy. Mm. Um, all they did was pretty much take the clues from Daniel chapter 7, which is listed in your lesson, by mm -hmm. the way. There's seven of them. And they matched it up with who has done this mm. throughout history. 
Uh, so when they looked at it, they looked at the history time in which this entity lived. Well, who meets all these criteria that was doing all these things? <laughs> and there's only one. Yes. And, and so that's how you yeah. identify it. You use history using the uh, uh, the principles of interpreting mm -hmm. uh, uh, Bible prophecy, mm -hmm. and it will definitely yes. key into one. There's not yeah. uh, maybe out of three yeah. or four. No, there's one that yeah. sticks out. Both. Uh, so when you look <laughs> at Daniel seven and eight, they both uh, describe uh, as a little horn. There's a horn, little horn there. Two. Both are persecuting powers. Mm -hmm. Uh, three, both are self-exalting self and blasphemous. Mm -hmm. uh, you also have four, both target God's people. Five, both have aspects of their activity delineated by prophetic time. Six, both extend until the end of time. Mm. And this is key for us to understand yes. because especially when we look at Daniel chapter 2 and we, we identify the head of gold as mm. Babylon, the uh, chest and arms of silver as uh, Media Persia. Yes. We have the belly and thighs of Greece. Yes. Then we have the legs of Rome. But when we do our evangelistic meetings and we get down to the feet and toes, all we say is the, ten, uh, kingdoms. the ten kingdoms of divided Rome. And mm. we leave it at that. Mm. But understanding when you put it's Daniel 2 together mm -hmm. and you put Daniel 7 together, the, the feet of iron and clay is matched up with the little yes. horn. So when you come, when we identify the little horn, you can't just say it's yeah. the divided kingdom of yeah. Rome like you did in Daniel chapter mm -hmm. 2. They are corresponding prophecies, sister chapters, and they have to be the same. Remember, there's still iron <clears throat> in, the, in the ten toes. Yes, <laughs> there's still iron in the ten toes. Except so for the clay. Yes. So uh, when we present this mm. in Daniel chapter 2, we have to be precise on yes. who that is. Yes. and don't kind of, But then again, yes, I understand you could kind of leave it a little bit obscure because mm. then Daniel 7 clarifies it, mm. who it is. But still, we want to be sure that, mm. you know, that's the same. So yes. um, both extended to the end of time and both are to be supernaturally uh, destroyed. So there's only one power uh, that fits the history and prophecy, and that's mm. the papacy. So that's clearly identified. And I just want to make sure, especially our non-Adventist viewers that are viewing in with us, because we're often accused of being uh, Catholic bashers or Catholic haters, and we don't hate the Catholics. Yes. We believe that there are a lot of godly people uh, who live up to the light that they know in the Catholic Church. So we're not saying this because we're, we hate the Catholics, mm -hmm. we're anti-Catholics, no, we're not. We're just uh, simply stating using the historicist method, interpreting mm. the Bible correctly, who the Bible is identifying, who the little horn is. Mm -hmm. That's all we're doing. We're just expositors, <laughs> expounding on all the right. Bible who identifies it. So please don't mischaracterize mm. us as Catholic haters. We don't hate Catholics. We love all people. Uh, and more than likely, this uh, when we talk about this, we're talking about the system. Mm. We're not talking about the people in the church. So... Um, we just wanted to make that clear yes. for our viewers. <laughs> but one of, I think one of the main characteristics that everybody know mm -hmm. is the the one thousand two hundred sixty years yes. of persecution mm -hmm. that we know as a dark age. Yep. So everybody knows about yes. that. Yes, <laughs> <Yeah>, they do. <laughs> Even yeah. in history. Yeah. And it's important for us to point out that when we're speaking about the interpretation of the the little horn. Mm -hmm. We're actually to specifically uh, speaking about the papal power. Mm -hmm. We must try and help people to understand the difference between the papal power mm -hmm. and the Roman Catholic Church. Because mm -hmm. they're two separate uh, entities. Uh, the Roman Catholic Church is the remainder of the Christian Church as a body mm. through the church history, the Christian church history from the time of Christ mm. all the way until the, mm. uh, the, 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 the end of the, of, the, uh, papal, of, the, of the papacy in 1798. So we're talking about the, the, the papal power, and the papal power per, uh, uh, pertains specifically to the leadership of the, of the Roman pagan power takeover that was substituted by the, by the by the pontifical leader of the Roman Catholic Church at that time. So, and as we see it today, because it's important for us to see how that's mm. important for us today, because that power is 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 being defined as 
reaching our times. And as we see it today, we see the, the, the papal power separate from the Roman Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. right. okay, we see the papal power in itself going solo to, to do the political work of, of that power. Mm -hmm. And then you see the Roman Catholic Church on the other side uh, as faithful uh, members mm -hmm. of that group who are still being uh, under the umbrella of Christians. And so are we. And we are, uh, but we are the, uh, the Protestant Christians, because that's why we're, we're talking about the, 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 the Bible and, and prophecy here, is because it helps us identify ourselves, mm. who we are. We are uh, Seventh-day Adventist Christians, but how did we become Seventh-day Adventist Christians is a result of the Reformation in the 1300s, starting from the 1300s all the way until, uh, until the 1500s uh, when uh, Luther uh, finally... Right. Uh, 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 you know, brought it to a head, and the split was was created, and so we now have we actually have two major parts of Christianity. Mm. One of it, which is the the largest part, is Roman Catholic Catholic Church, and the other the other half is the Protestant churches, and we are the 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 the, the ones that are continuing to carry the. The, 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 the teachings of Protestantism that caused the Reformation that made us inherit these interpretations. Yeah, so it's important for us to identify the, the difference between the papal power and the Roman Catholic Church as a group of, of, of Christian people for the sake of those that are, that are interested in, 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 in understanding these prophecies and how it applies to us as a whole. And then for us to understand our role as being given the message for the times that we live in. Because we do have a specific message mm. that, that is born from this interpretation of, of, of prophecy. Mm. As we see here in identifying the little horn. Mm. Because the little horn definitely is the papal power. Mm. And you can't mistake it, it you know. And, and it has to do with the, uh, with the development of the religious world as we know it from that time until the time that we live in. Uh, right. So that's uh, important mm. for, for, for some of our viewers and ourselves <coughs> to kind of uh, uh, look at that from that angle. Uh. So not only we, we have identified uh, some of the uh, crucial uh, fulfillment of prophecies uh, that has to do with the, the little home, because the little home has so much influence in, in, in destroying the gospel, I should say. Yeah, uh, diverting everything that was supposed to be the truth. That's its role. Yeah. So now we've uh, seen, and now we have uh, have proof. Uh, but one of the major uh, things that we can learn from historicism is the fulfillment of a prophecy to do with the last events and the last movement, uh, especially with this church. Mm -hmm. And that's um, I'm talking specifically about the end of the 2000. 300 mm -hmm. years that were mentioned in the, in the main text. So what is that uh, main fulfillment of prophecy? Well, we see the Daniel 7 and Daniel 8. Um, in Daniel 7, once it lists the beasts, mm. it goes right into, starting in verse 9, um, all the way to about verse 14, where you see a judgment scene mm. come forward. Uh, this is right after the description of the uh, fourth beast and then mm. the little horn that comes out of that right. fourth beast. <clears throat> uh, we know from Revelation, mm. the sister book of Daniel, mm -hmm. that that little horn suffers a mortal wound. Mm. So we know that when it suffers a mortal wound, that's 1798. Yes. So sometime after 1798, the Bible gives us an indication that there would be a judgment scene that comes into play. And this is beginning in verse 9. Uh, so when we read starting with verse 9, it says, I watched till thrones were put in place, and the Ancient of Days was seated. His garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame, its wheels a burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. A thousand and thousands ministered to him. Ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated, and the books were open. So, 
We know that at some time after the rise of the little horn, mm. when we put it together with Revelation chapter 13, sometime after the uh, mortal wound, you have the investigative judgment beginning sometime after 1798. We know that because if you go to Revelation 13, it talks to us about how uh, the dragon, we know who the dragon is. Revelation 12 tells us the dragon is Satan, right? Mm -hmm. yes. So the dragon gives this beast its authority and its seat. And it said, uh, great was this beast and the whole world marveled after the beast after the wound was healed. It continues to explain, uh, starting in verse five, down to verse 9, what this uh, beast power is, which is in Daniel, it's the little horn. In Revelation, it's the beast power here. And he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and 42 months. Now, 42 months is 1,260 days, which is the 1,260 mm. years. Verse 6, then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. So you see it's repeating the same, same. language of mm -hmm. Daniel 7, mm -hmm. uh, uh, talking about the little horn. Uh, verse 7, it was, granted to make, to, it was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. So it's a, uh, definitely a world ruling Supreme. power mm. that was persecuting God's people. Mm. Then when you get to verse 10, he who leads into captivity shall go mm. into mm. captivity. Mm. That's referring to the 1798 incident mm. here. So uh, uh, definitely uh, for our viewers, when you're trying to understand the 2300 day prophecy, this uh, you, you have to read Daniel and Revelation mm. together because in Daniel it's sealed, yes. in Revelation it's, it's opened. So uh, when you put these together, you know that there's a judgment scene mm. that is to rise up sometime after 1798. This is repeated in Daniel chapter 8. When uh, the beasts are repeated, the beasts are different mm -hmm. in Daniel 8, but the concept's still the same. Mm. The beasts represent kingdom, nation, or... Right. So it starts with... Uh, uh, media Persia and Greece mm -hmm. and then uh, of course you have uh, these two going at it and of course after Greece mm -hmm. you have Rome that rises out of there so uh, uh, from Rome verse 9 says in chapter 8 and out of one of them came a little horn which mm -hmm. exceedingly grew great to the south and toward the east and it goes on to list what it what it does and it casts down the sanctuary the truths and things like that uh, then Verse 13, I heard a holy one speaking, and another holy one said to that certain one who was speaking, How long will the vision be concerning the daily sacrifices and the transgression of desolation and the giving of both the sanctuary and the host to be trampled upon? Verse 14, which is our memory text, unto 2,300 days, then mm -hmm. shall the sanctuary be cleansed. So when you put these two together, you, you can identify Daniel 7 gives beasts that represent kingdoms. Daniel 8 gives beasts that uh, 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 represent kingdoms. Um, in Daniel 7, it has an investigative judgment going on, a judgment scene going on. But in Daniel 8, it uses the language of cleansing the sanctuary. Mm. Now, if you understand the sanctuary teaching, the only time they cleansed the sanctuary the was on the Day of Atonement, mm. which was Judgment mm. Day. Judgment Day. Right. Yes, for Israel, mm -hmm. for God's people. So this is how you'll see that this all matches mm -hmm. uh, up when you compare Daniel 7 and Daniel 8, that there is definitely an investigative judgment that is to go on mm -hmm. sometime after 1798, after the wounding of the beast. But of course, we know that the date is, or the year was, well, we do know the date, October 22nd, 1844 because we do the math mm -hmm. from the 2300 day prophecy so everything fits when we uh, interpret the bible correctly and this is how our investigative judgment doctrine uh, comes into play mm -hmm. and we, i must say that this doctrine is actually unique mm -hmm. to us yes. because everyone seems to believe that the judgment happens after jesus comes which is true but they don't understand the phases of judgment that goes mm -hmm. on. There's the investigative judgment that goes on, uh, that uh, ends at the close of probation. Right. Then you have the judgment that is confirmed by the saints. That's why the Bible says, don't you know that you shall judge angels? Mm -hmm. And So this is when we go to heaven and we become kind of like the jury that confirms the judgments of God. And then when they come back after a thousand years, it's judgment executed. Mm -hmm. 
those are the three phases of it. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are teachings, and mm -hmm. I have to let our viewers know, beware. They throw the judgment, everything after the second coming. Uh, they don't. That's futurism. Right. They don't uh, understand it in the historicist mm -hmm. uh, point of view, in which which what we're trying to teach mm -hmm. that it's going on now. <laughs> There's a part that's going to go on in the future. You want to touch on uh, the essence of the investigative judgment uh, to do with our lives now? Or we should leave that on another, because that's another big discussion. <laughs> Which is true, because well, th that's why Daniel 7 says uh, the court was seated and mm. the books were opened. Mm -hmm. And the question is, what books are mm -hmm. being opened? Well, the Bible speaks of two types of books, right? Yeah. There's the book of life, and then there's the book of remembrance. Mm. The Book of Remembrance, uh, or uh, they also called the Book of Deeds, is where all of yeah. our <laughs> thoughts, words, and deeds are written. And when they look through that book, if it doesn't say pardon, covered by the blood, overcome by the blood of the Lamb, uh, you're going to be held mm -hmm. against you. And that's why Revelation 13 says mm -hmm. that those who have the mark of the beast says he himself will have to drink of the wine of the wrath of God. Mm. Well, why does it say he himself will have to drink the wine of the wrath of God? Because Jesus already drank that cup for mm. us. So when he drank that cup, that's the cup that he said, Father, take this cup away from me. And mm. the question, what was that cup? Mm. That was the cup of the wrath of God poured upon him. Mm. So when he drank it, it saves us from drink. Yes. But if we don't accept his sacrifice, mm -hmm. cleansing us from all unrighteousness and pardoning us from our our sins and things like that, then you have to drink it yourself. Yes. That's why Revelation 13 says, mm -hmm. he himself will have to drink of the wine of the wrath of God. So what's the implication what, for us today? For us today, mm -hmm. our deeds are mm -hmm. being judged. Mm -hmm. uh, Solomon says the same thing. He says, whether you, if you go to uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, mm -hmm. he, for the youth. he, yes, mm -hmm. for the youth, right? He says, uh, that let us hear the conclusion mm -hmm. of the whole mm -hmm. matter. Fear God and keep Jesus his commandments, Christ. for this is the whole duty of man. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, mm. whether good or mm. evil. Amen. Chris, I think we are running out of time. Would you like to say about the typology as prophecy? Uh, pretty much tie into what... It's uh, the same mm -hmm. thing that we talked about with the sanctuary message. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's important to point out that the sanctuary message was the guiding message. Mm. for the identification of the uh, of the movement of God's people historically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when they had come to the period of the fulfillment of the 2300 day mm -hmm. prophecy in 1844 this was a global <coughs> worldwide Christian mm -hmm. event mm -hmm. it was the event of the uh, of the of the divinely uh, inspired proclamation mm. of the uh, second coming message mm -hmm. and the whole world was engaged in it you know mm -hmm. and uh, it was uh, it was inspired from the interpretation of, of, of the very prophecies that Daniel and Revelation were applying to mm -hmm. and honestly the the Christian world at that point in time believed that Jesus was going to come back mm -hmm. but uh, uh, it it wasn't um, it wasn't until the passing of the time that uh, man had attempted to set as the day of the coming of Christ, unbeknowing or at that time obscured from the, from, from the Word of God that says that no man knows the day and hour of the coming of the Son of Man. Mm -hmm. And therefore, when, when, the, when the whole Christian world was waiting uh, specifically for October uh, 22nd of uh, 1844, as the day of the coming of Christ, they were disappointed. Mm. So it was. It's very important for us to 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 recall that history, because that's when that's when uh, uh, the the, the uh, divine uh, 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 writers uh, refer to as God was testing the the, the genuineness. Mm of the preparedness of his people. Mm. But it was found out that the, that the genuineness of the people were not, were not uh, or, the, or the people that were not, were not really prepared genuinely, because mm -hmm. we know, because after the, the disappointment, the, the 90, I'd probably say 99% of, of, of all of those that were waiting, and which is the bulk of them were the Protestant uh, uh, churches of the time, they abandoned the the, the, mm. uh, the faith. Mm. 
They mm -hmm. abandoned the word of God. They abandoned the, 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 the validity of the interpretation of, of, of prophecy. And, and they turned their backs on it. And that was very important and crucial because that's when, 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 when the Spirit of God revived the, the, the group that, that stayed and hung on to the, to, to the certainty of, of the Word of God, since, since mm. that's the, 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 uh, the, the overarching, uh, 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 what you call, uh, purpose for this quarter study, establishing the validity of God's Word. And so it's very important for us to, to know that it's a sanctuary message that was, w was the key uh, 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 teaching or mm -hmm. doctrine that established the people that remained faithful to the Word of God and went back and, and mm -hmm. reinterpreted the, the, the prophecies and discovered that the 1844 fulfillment of the 2300-day prophecy was not about the coming of Jesus, but was about the, the beginning of the investigative judgment, which is now known as the 1844 movement of Christ in heaven, not the movement of Christ towards earth. So those are just some of the neat parts of our understanding as, as a people. So from that time on, uh, we have been entrusted with that message. And I believe the, 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 the you know the, the, the body that has been given the entrustment of that message has been doing quite a quite a job in fulfilling that for the past hundred and seventy some years now. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we, uh, you know, uh, Solomon says in Ecclesiastes chapter one and verse nine, that which has been is what will be. That which is done is what will be done and there is nothing new under the sun. Mm. He repeats this in Ecclesiastes 3, verse 15, right? That which is, that which is, has already been, and what is to be, has already been. Correct. In other words, uh, history tends to repeat itself. Mm -hmm. So when uh, Thursday talks about typology as prophecy, yes. we, uh, 1 Corinthians comes to mind. When Same. Paul brings the journey of the Exodus as, as a typology, mm -hmm. as an example for us who are living in mm -hmm. the last days. So not only there are prophecies that are literally prophecies mm -hmm. like Daniel and Revelation, the stories of Scripture can be typologies mm -hmm. or foreshadowing of what is to happen yes. in the future. Yes. So hence the title typology as prophecies. prophecy. So when they were... Uh, slaying the lamb in the sanctuary, right? And uh, the process of forgiveness of sin mm. in the Old Testament. John understood that process. And when he saw Jesus in John chapter 1, verse 29, right, right. And he says, Behold the lamb of God, mm -hmm. that sanctuary mm -hmm. language, who taketh away the sins of the world. Mm -hmm. Typology. Again, so um, it's uh, key for us to understand that a lot of these things that we read about in Scripture, Luke 17 tells us, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, yes. they married, they were given in marriage until, you know. <laughs> so is, this, is it safe to say that the, the typology overlaps with the apocalyptic yes. prophecy? Yes, yes. Okay, so we're coming to the end of our discussion. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think the typology uh, part ends our lesson, mm -hmm. and, and it ends well with the fact that uh, we we look at the, the, the sanctuary like uh, Chris was mm -hmm. trying to and you mm -hmm. alluded to from the beginning that the, the sanctuary is, is central mm -hmm. uh, to our understanding of prophecy as well mm -hmm. because uh, almost everything yeah. almost the whole plan of salvation it was was prophesied in there yes in the services, the and, services. and the priest himself yes. and the work of the priest everything mm -hmm. in the sanctuary and that's why the book of Revelation yeah. is structured based on the uh, on sanctuary. Yes. And the book of Hebrews is talk about the nobody else is like Christ right. in terms of you know elevating the priestlyhood of of Jesus Christ above all the priests of Israel. Yes. And, and it's important to know that to learn that because uh, when you know the sanctuary and you understand every ser services of it, the sanctuary. You can you can almost uh, understand historicism. Yes. And how all these things were laid out in fulfilling of prophecies. And, and I must add to that in regards to a must understand that prophecy is all about 
the revealing of Christ. Mm -hmm. The book of Revelation begins with, this is the revelation mm -hmm. of revealing of Jesus Christ. Because some people teach that the gospel is separate, separate. from prophecy. No. No. They are one and the same. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, if you understood, no. if yeah. you understood the gospel that uh, came forth in typology right. from Genesis 3.15 all the mm -hmm. way through to the book of Revelation, mm -hmm. you'll see that, remember, prophecy is an explanation, mm -hmm. a revealing of who God is, right. and the gospel is central to that. Right. So the gospel and, the, and prophecy mm -hmm. are linked. Mm -hmm. Don't separate them. So I'd right. like to share that. Um, you know, I must also point out that there are Christians who, who end the, the gospel with the cross. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's, like I said, yes. like you said, you know, <laughs> if you look at the century, right. the cross is just the beginning yes. of, the, of your min, of the ministry mm -hmm. in the century. Mm -hmm. There's a, a killing of the lamb, mm -hmm. and then there's a, another priest, priestly ministry that takes that blood inside, mm -hmm. but it doesn't just go inside. He will, but you know, work the the priestly, priestly ministry inside, and then he has to come out. Yes. And Revelation says yes. that Jesus has to come back mm -hmm. because he has to come out and, and all the trumpets will be sound and all that uh, things, you know, that nature will be happening. And that's why this is the holistic approach. Mm -hmm. You know, we, when we talk about uh, historicism, mm -hmm. it's, it's view and it's uh, uh, all the principles that help us understand the, the Bible and the fulfilling of God's prophecies. It's holistic. Yes, and it's cohesive in, in its nature, and that nothing left in, is left behind for for us, you know, because God is showing us this is how everything is going to be fulfilled. Yes, so that's our lesson uh, for today, and I hope that you you're blessed with our Man. discussion. If you need to understand more, call that number on the screen six nine nine four three three eight. We can have further discussions. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have enough time. We are mm -hmm. confined by the time we're given, uh, but you know we have more discussions mm -hmm. uh, ahead of us. Uh, let's say a prayer before we finish. Thank you so much, Father, for your word. Mm -hmm. Especially, we thank you for the words of prophecy. Amen. These are your sure word of prophecy, and we would like to commit our discussion uh, uh, we have done before you, so that it will be a blessing to anyone who will come to find out and will come to see our discussion. May you bless all those viewers who are faithfully listening to each of our programs and may you point them your ways until they're, they're searching, uh, their search will end in you. We pray that you'll bless our, our, your servants here and myself for the glory of your name. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.